guys, I want to welcome you to the weekly Wednesday for the Financial Freedom Newsletter, where every week, every Wednesday, we delve into something inspirational, motivational, something excerpt taken from the Financial Freedom Weekly Newsletter. Wherever you are, if you're listening on Spotify, on iTunes, Google, be sure to click the like, subscribe, share, comment. Without ado, let's get into the show. Welcome, everybody, to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. As you know, I talk about the four different types of freedom, time, financial, location, health freedom. In that light, I'm always trying to bring value to the audience and listeners by scouting out entrepreneurs on the cutting edge, influencing, talking about marketing, small business, entrepreneurship, mindset. And with that, I have uh, Jeff uh, Janakovo, and his mantra is helping Main Street and face-to-face businesses succeed in an Amazon world, which is quite very pertinent to today's um, times. And today's talk is going to be all about... um, Amazon world, business owners, and uh, marketing. And uh, I'll let Jeff introduce himself. So Jeff, welcome. Yeah, well, thank you, doctor, for having me on the show. I appreciate that. Uh, I think this is my first episode where I have a doctor interviewing me. So that's kind of cool. I like that. So yeah, a lot of people uh, come across my profiles and they'll see Amazon world. Oh, you must be like an Amazon guy and help with Amazon FBA and, and, couldn't be further from the truth. It's actually somewhat of a little bit of a test for the people who reach out to me uh, to see if if they actually kind of take in and can uh, process the information that I put out there. So I'm rooted in Main Street. I am rooted in face-to-face business. Obviously, it's 2023. We live in a digital world, or as I like to call it, an Amazon world, uh, where technology, we can't exist without it. I 100% get that. Uh, but, you know, the people I talk to, the the business owners I work with, I remind them that all of this digital stuff is just media. And until you can understand proper marketing and core marketing tenants, um, until you've got a good grasp on that, it doesn't matter what media you go to. You go as old school as the yellow book to as new school as, you know, AI generated messages and images automated and distributed for you. Until you understand your market and your message and your media, it's kind of all lost. So that, you know, I really look to bring forth, you know, a a, a, a um, soundboard for these uh, Main Street type businesses uh, who work face to face with their clients and help them exist inside this world where technology is all around us. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Um, which is uh, one thing. That's quite interesting from your um, experience is that um, when you say an Amazon world, uh, what what do you mean by that? To describe it briefly and what are the challenges creatives and entrepreneurs have in this um, Amazon world? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, for me, so I have served, worked with, have interest in businesses that are on, you know, doing business on Main Street. So the retail mattress store that I call on as an example we're doing business on Main Street. We're not as sexy. We're not as cool as a couple clicks and ship a mattress to your door, like maybe purple mattresses as an example. However, we have carved out a very unique niche within the world of sleep and sleep improvement and wellness around sleep and happiness around sleep uh, through book authorship, expert positioning, creating authority to where our business has grown and it's grown further, faster In those years where those online uh, wonder kids, so to say, of online mattress sales uh, have grown. So when I say Amazon world, I'm kind of using that as a a generic term, a verb, uh, a a broad definition that there's an awful lot of commerce done online, but there's exponentially more done face to face and on Main Street. Interesting. Yeah, when uh, when people hear Amazon World, they think um, you know, like the Uber Lyfts and the Airbnbs mm-hmm. and and this um, really just getting rid of legacy institutions, middlemen. One thing uh, that was quite 
interesting is is uh, when I was we were discussing is the value of marketing assets. And everybody says focus on a niche, focus on your brand. But you say why focusing on a brand first is a waste of time. That's I'm fascinated and curious why you say that. Well, so my belief is you create a brand by creating one happy customer at a time, right? And ultimately, the the niche you you decide to go into, the types of customers that you can attract, the products that they buy from you, the happiness you give, the reviews and feedback that they send back, that's what constructs your brand. You know, and I, I use this analogy a lot. A lot of my competitors and peers, people that I've coached with in the industry and outside, they look to the biggest things in their market and try to emulate what they're doing. So like as an example, Coca-Cola, and recently they had a really good marketing campaign of let's just put the first name of everybody on the bottle. Let's put these adjectives like sassy, brash on the bottle, right? So it might've been Christopher, it might've been Jeff, it might've been sassy, it might've been brash, whatever. But that was attraction to their brand. But truth be told, Coca-Cola at this point has reached such an epitome in marketing, an epitome in, in, in market penetration that to just go and emulate what Coca-Cola does may or may not be a good thing for your business. To bring it back down to my world, the world where I have a direct example in, there used to be a national competitor years ago that had old school kind of ugly advertising. If there was a one square inch, they were putting a picture of a headboard in it or a little $50 off coupon. And it was ugly, but it was effective. And then one day you saw this pretty ad come out. And so all their competitors that were doing ugly ads were like, well, maybe we need to do pretty ads. But the reality was the pretty ads were positioning that 700 store chain for private equity and a sale. Wall Street and private equity banks, they don't get ugly old school direct response type advertising. They get logos and pretty pictures and artwork. And mm -hmm. that was the whole reason for that shift. So all their competitors said, well, we got to follow what the big brand does in our marketplace. But what they didn't realize is their motives were entirely different than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Their motive was to go get a sale on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. Their competitor's motive was we got to sell something today. But they moved away from an effective technique trying to chase what the big brand does. So I always believe... Build your brand through those effective sales of products, services you offer your customers. Build on that feedback, those reviews they get. And that identifies your brand. And then build on it. Sure. Create imagery, logos, artwork, all that stuff around what you do very well. But until you've done it, it's really hard to create a brand within a vacuum of just an idea. You, you got to execute first. It's it's interesting because um, what you're describing, because I've talked to a lot of um, individuals and uh, which we'll talk about this um, idea of um, intentional by design. We'll, we'll talk about balance is BS and that intentional life by design is the goal. But mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is uh, I was talking to one guest and she was saying that, um, you know, the podcast and, you know, some people want to use podcasts for marketing or some is to elevate their brand. And, you know, do so you have to really understand like why you're doing things. It reminds me of the mantra, stay in your own lane. Don't like, try and copy everybody and um you know use that's what the, these tools are here for to help us bring value to our audiences so tell us about this balance is bs and that an intentional life by design is the goal yeah so really simple everybody's seen the the old school brass scale right it's used in a lot of like legal imagery you know when whenever you balance out those weights on the left or the right of the scale what does the reading say it says zero. I want nothing to do with zero of anything. I don't want zero freedom. I don't want zero money. I don't want zero love. I don't want zero happiness. So everybody chases this definition of balance. And first I would put forth to people, well, who are you listening to? And what does their life look like? Mm -hmm. You know, because there's a lot of times, and you know this, uh, there's a lot of times there's some dirty secrets behind the curtain you know um there's some dirty secrets in the in the health history right when you're paying attention to the person who's saying chase balance you have to ask yourself first 
What's their pedigree? What's their life look like? And I'm not here saying I'm perfect. I'm far from it. But I do know one thing that makes me happiest when I'm focused on what makes me happy and I ignore that balance of the perfect amount of time with your family each day, the perfect amount of time with your, your, your employees and teammates each day, the perfect amount of time with your customers each day. When I move away from that and I just say, what's the most important thing to accomplish in these verticals? And I get focused on that. My life is far more happier. So there's some weeks, uh, like as an example, uh, we're kind of my wife and I are in this kind of transition. We, we're kind of pseudo empty nesters. We've got a 19 year old son who's starting out in his life and career. He's working a full time job. I don't really see him. He works second shift. He sleeps late. He he's figuring things out as an adult. And we're kind of let him explore that. But I haven't seen him for five days more than a few minutes. And I kind of just, if I got caught up in the balance of what somebody says I should have with my son, that would stress me out. Mm. But I can check in with him and see where he's learning, where he's, you know, the path he's on. I I said today, are you making that manager role? Are you progressing? He says, yes, I'm actually ahead. Fantastic. That warmed my heart tremendously. Right. So it, it's that you, you have to ask yourself, whose definition of balance is it? And then is it even for you? I guess to find your own balance is really the message here. Yeah. Like, you do, I mean, your your uh, your advice is very, very practical to, you know, what you're talking about. And, you know, it's zooming out. It's like, um, uh, you know, like it's it's, you know, mainstream media is kind of like uh, promotes this consumerism, you know, you know, this envy, you know, greed, keep up with the Jones, you know, got to endlessly, you mm-hmm. know, I got to make, make, I you know my status is, you know, my values, this and that. And um, yeah. what you're talking about is like, you know, you be intentional, like don't have to compare yourself to the Jones and, you know, all the switches, right. uh, which is very powerful because once you do that, then, you know, then you basically cut out all the garbage and you basically can, focus on you know what's your your purpose so yeah uh, one so another question you know this leads us to another one is uh building a business with purpose developing your legacy and focusing on the shift from success to significance in business Mm -hmm. Um, this this is timeless this is priceless yeah yeah so i think you you really need uh to define the purpose of why you're in business and this isn't the this is not the thoughts and statements like you find on that office artwork where there's like a picture of a mountain or an ocean and a broad general statement. Uh, again, I use my retail business a lot as an example because it's the, the the business I'm involved in where I have the most direct impact and influence and control. Uh, plus, some of my other clients and people I work with, they don't like me talking about their business. It's because I get it, right? <laughs> so our purpose in the retail mattress store business is to be so impactful in our county. We believe if we get our local county sleeping better, we're a happier, more productive county. And we want to be a part of that. And everything we're going to do, put us to the test that we're meeting up to that purpose to help our county, help our people that come and do business with us be happier and more productive. So in the morning, they're not in pain, grumpy, tired, sore. They have an argument with their spouse when they walk out the door. And the last thing they said was something nasty and God forbid there's a car accident. And that was the last thing they said. Our purpose is to reverse all that. And it is that meaningful. It is. It can be that impactful. That's our purpose. Mm-hmm. Now, everything else we do behind that has to measure up to that statement. It can't just be a rectangle sold at a white mattress rectangle sold at an inexpensive price. Mm-hmm. Because that may or may not help that person be more productive, wake up happy. Mm -hmm. And everything we do, whether it's the delivery experience in your home, because we'll like vacuum around your nightstands and under your bed as Mm -hmm. an extra touch of service, we'll lay out a red carpet on your doorstep so we don't drag mud in the house. You know, we'll take time in the showroom to just have a conversation and find the right fit and understand your needs. The way we just our ads, everything we do matches up to that purpose of helping our customers wake up happy pain-free, sleep better, and be more productive. And so you can put that broad general artwork statement, you know, you could tattoo that on your arm, you could put it on the door of your business, you can put it on the front page of your website. That's cool if you if you're connected to it, but you better have every action be able to back that up. 
Mm -hmm. and be willing to say to your customers, am I meeting up to that measure of purpose? The other concept is, uh, you know, going from, you know, purpose and then, you know, the, we, we're always like constantly like striving, striving. We got to, you know, FOMO and greed. And, but you talk about how letting go leads to increased success. Uh, tell us mm-hmm. the concept behind that. And, uh, cause it's really important for the listeners. Sometimes you just have to let go and, you know, then, then things start to you know, track things. Yep. I mean, I had a conversation with a friend last night. Um, he's, uh, he's got a couple different business interests. Um, He started a coaching group, uh, kind of leadership group. And the question was, you know, if I really look at this from an analytical standpoint, I'm not making a lot of money as compared to if I focus my efforts elsewhere. And I asked one question. I said, five years from now, which business do you want to be the leader of? If you had to pick one, which one? And he said, well, my coaching business. I said, okay, then stopping is not an option. What you need to let go of, the things that you just told me that you don't like, is all things either an employee within one of your existing businesses could do, or could be outsourced to like a virtual assistant type uh, position. And it would be a little heavier lift in the interim to get some of those SOPs done, some of that training done, but then you just go. Now you just get to do the stuff within that coaching group you love. So no more booking of your podcast, no more scheduling dinners, no more scheduling guests to come in and talk to the group. You can you can streamline all that and shed that and let go. And he said, well, but they won't do it as good as it me. I said, well, I don't know. Do you want my honest answer there? I said, because I think there could have th- things that could have been done better. And I'm a client in that group. I said, I think there's things that could have been done better. So it's not perfection. It's consistency. And when you can just be able to let go and build momentum, that's powerful. It's very, very powerful. So this starting and stopping stuff doesn't build rapport, doesn't build trust with anybody because consistency in business is one of the number one keys to success, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you've heard that. Yeah. Other guests have talked about it. Yeah. It's interesting because uh, this reminds me of the quotes, uh, people overestimate what they can do in the span of three months or span of 10 months, but they underestimate what they can do in uh the span of 10 years. Uh, and then also it's just, you know, it's about one, and especially during the, the, this, this current recession right now, a lot of companies um, that, that, that planned and prepared for it, you know, uh, the one way to gain market share is not, not to, you know, all you have to do is stay alive, you know, stay alive in this, in this environment. And then you come out stronger because most of your competitors are gone. Right. So um, right. Uh, I'm interested in this, um, marketing because you're talking about this uh you know as we come to the conclusion you talk about foundation foundational marketing assets so important to the business and what are must-haves for a business's um marketing toolbox yeah for me uh i i try to put this in as many businesses as i'm involved in as possible and that's a book uh whether it's delivered pdf kindle or old school print i actually have I keep this stack here because it is so important. But this is my book, Sleep Better, and it's on video. If you're happen to catch this video, but if you're listening on audio, uh, the book is called Sleep Better. So remember when I said purpose, everything we have to do has to back up that purpose of helping our community wake up happy, be more productive, have better conversations with their their family, their friends, their spouses, their kids, their employees, their employers, strangers, neighbors. That's our purpose. Well, show me a store in the nation that commits to it to that level and sends that book out for free. And it's it's valuable where our customers have actually pushed off a purchase because they've committed to better habits and sleep hygiene and they've delayed their purchase. And I'm okay with that. So that's the quality of a book I'm talking about that becomes so foundational. That book exists in print ads. It's a pay-per-click ad campaign. It's on social media. I'm actually working right now through one of, I have two virtual assistants in that retail business that helped me. So I practice what I preach about shedding and letting go. The one of the VAs right now is working on uh, creating a billboard for me with the book image about getting that book for download. A, a, a book creates authority. It creates expertise. It's game changing to what it can do 
the marketing levers and the doors that it can open, it's it's can make you millions of dollars and help the people you serve. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And then yeah, so many you know this conversation stoked so many um, quotes that I've heard and read, and um, you know a lot of it's um, you know your ideal client, your customer avatar. And, you know, people unfollow you or, you know, they write you a bad review or, you know, all this, it's just, may, it's not, may not be a reflection of you. It could be, it's just the wrong fit or, you know, your message right. doesn't resonate with you. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and um, so that's a, what a great conversation. I'm sure a lot of people took so much value. Um, if people wanted to follow you, contact you, how would they follow you on social media, et cetera? Yeah, I made it really easy. You did a great job, by the way, doctor, with my last name Janakovo. So it's as hard to spell as it is to say, but for everybody listening, I made it real simple. Just go to thejeffg.com and you can kind of see all the things I'm involved in. Um, you want to connect with me on any one of those ways. There's buttons to do that. If you just want to be a friend and connect on social media, there's buttons there as well. So thejeffg.com, that's the central hub for everything I've got going on. And uh, so Jeff's uh, website is J E F F G A G and then uh so check that out. He's also on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube. So check that out. He's also got uh the big tiff ticket life dot uh main dot com slash main street. And that's um you should check that out as well. So and for all the audience listening, uh Jeff's resources will be in the links and show notes. And let's thank Jeff again for a wonderful, fantastic discussion and thanks for coming on to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciated it. I hope you really enjoyed that wonderful, inspirational, motivational piece. Again, if you, wherever you are listening, if you liked it, be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. We're on everywhere Spotify, iTunes, Google, Amazon, Audible. And without much ado, be sure to. Thank this show's sponsors, and we'll see you next week.